Tobin. Let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. I'm sure you guys are starving by now, but let's get revved up and raring to go. Whoever survives will be treated to a fancy lunch. Guess what? Rabbit curry is on the menu. Huh? I'm not the main ingredient, right? I'm here today because Coach Nekomaru risked his life to protect me. I'm gonna be the one who avenges him. I'll definitely find out who the killer is. I'm definitely not tempted by curry. Got it? Uh, Akane, you seem to have an impressive amount of drool flowing from your mouth. Hey, why don't we try going over the incident? We weren't able to leave Strawberry House, so I want to make sure we get a detailed understanding. Um, I discovered Nekomaru's body a little before 7 a.m. I headed over to Grape Tower for Monokuma Taichi and found the body there. Hajime and Chiaki were also with me. Hajime was with Miss Sonia and Chiaki that early in the morning? Don't tell me you three were together since last night! Imbecile! I am not some woman with flexible legs! Uh, of course you're not! You're much classier than that! With legs like those? I could probably do the splits real easy. We just happened to run into each other on the first floor of Grape House and went to the tower together. And then, the three of us discovered Nekomaru's body. The body discovery announcement was made soon after. Akane heard that and rushed over. We heard the body discovery announcement too, from Strawberry House, obviously. As I recall, we found out the elevator was out of order, which left us stuck. So we decided to go to the tower for the time being and headed for Strawberry Hall. But someone even broke Strawberry Hall's door button. We couldn't go anywhere because of that. Thinking we should at least find some method to communicate, we set our sights on the lounge telephone. Forget these boring intros. Let's talk about the killer. Anyway. It's definitely someone from Strawberry House. What do you mean, definitely? There's no way a chick would kill someone so cruelly. So it must be one of you Strawberry House dudes. One of you better hurry up and confess, or I'll break all of you in half! You're the cruelest one here! Now, now. Enough with the lovers' quarrel. We need to think about this seriously. We don't have the luxury of discussing irrelevant things. The incident this time has many questions. The incident notwithstanding, I also have many questions. Then let's start with something even Miss Sonia can understand. The weapon. Huh? Well, the weapon is obvious, right? Huh? What the heck, you guys? The weapon! You can totally tell just by looking. I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime! That pillar, huh? No, the hammer! The killer used that hammer... and beat the crap out of him! If it was unexpected, I suppose that is possible. That's right! It was a surprise beating! The weapon is decided! I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime! 
The pillar, huh? No, the hammer! The killer used that hammer and beat the crap out of him! No, that's wrong! No, I can't accept that that hammer was the murder weapon. Why not? Why can't you accept it? A lot of oil was flowing from Nekomaru's body. Just like human blood, right? If the hammer was used to beat Nekomaru, you'd expect some oil to be on it at least. But that hammer was clean. So that's why you can't accept that it's the murder weapon. Well, yeah, but the killer might have wiped off the oil later. Why? Well, obviously, to make the hammer look like it's not the murder weapon. Then why bother cleaning the oil? If they didn't want it to look suspicious, they would have discarded the hammer. You're pretty insightful, baby gangsta. Baby gangsta? Me? Just so y'all know, I was trying to test you guys. I thought, maybe you guys mistook the hammer for the weapon or something. It seems that was a waste of time. Then what was the real weapon used to murder Nekomaru? That's the problem. There wasn't anything else at the crime scene that looked like a potential weapon. Then, how about we look at it from a different angle? If it doesn't have oil on it, it's not the weapon. So whatever has oil on it must be the weapon, right? I see! The only thing with oil on it is that broken pillar. Then that pillar is the weapon! Coach Nekomaru got clobbered with that pillar! Nobody could withstand a blow from that pillar. Even if you used 100% of your muscle strength, it would be impossible to wield it as a weapon. Why? We tried to move it, right? Yeah, that pillar was pretty frickin' heavy. But there's one dude who could have lifted that pillar. Huh? Who are you talking about? Coach Nekomaru's robot body! With that dude's super strength, lifting a pillar would be real easy. So, he lifted the pillar, and then what? Did he use it to beat himself? You mean, Nekomaru killed himself? Don't be stupid! He's the type to commit suicide! Then even if Nekomaru could have lifted that pillar, it has nothing to do with the case at all! Well, I guess you're right. What the heck?! But that's a problem. If it's not the pillar, then there's no other weapon we can think of. Um, there may be a way to use the pillar as a weapon without lifting it. Huh? For reals? Yes, for reals. I see. So my gut was right after all. All right, it's up to you, Sonya. Prove that pillar was the murder weapon. Understood. Then I shall give it my all. Sonya, here I go! There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not lifted, beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? They aimed right for his head and bullseye. Even I could probably tip it over. Considering the pillar's weight, it probably exerted a ton of force. 
Sonia, you go, girl! <laughs> I'm getting hella excited! There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not beating him with it, it's beyond it. What about tipping the pillar over? No, that's wrong! If Nekomaru was crushed by the pillar, then there should have been fragments on top of his body. Huh? Fragments? The pillar fragments were scattered beneath Nekomaru's body, but there weren't any on top of his body. If the pillar had been tipped over and crushed him, the fragments should have been on top of his body instead. I briefly considered that too, but it's probably not what happened. I... I see. That was entirely... my bad. If they didn't tip it over, then how did the killer murder Nekomaru with that pillar? How much longer are you gonna focus on the pillar? Just let it go already! There... there's no way I can let it go. I'm positive that Nekomaru was killed by that pillar. Why are you so certain about that? I just... I have a feeling. A feeling, huh? That's just your instincts. But we can't say for sure that that instinct is wrong, can we? There's another way to use that pillar to kill. You guys just haven't noticed it. it is that true? Then I shall ask you, what way is that? You guys, the same as usual. You're unable to clear a path to the future with your own powers, so you just stand there and falter. What a waste of talent. And you all intend to fight the future foundation? You make me laugh. What did you say? Regardless, it's not like I want to die with the rest of you. So I guess I should lend a hand. Hey, Nagito. What the hell happened to you? How come you're not talking like a lunatic anymore? I've learned a valuable lesson. Ignorance is by far the greatest shame. Huh? What do you mean? Who cares? Just tell us how the pillar was used to kill! Well, first of all, the pillar itself is not enough. But when combined with a specific item, there's a way it could be possible. A specific item? Of course, the ultimate weapon. The ultimate weapon? Isn't that the thing you get when you clear the final dead room? So, Nagito knows what the ultimate weapon is? Of course I know, but I'm pretty sure everyone else has seen it, you know? We've seen it? That's right, you've seen it clearly. Because I, the one who has claimed dominion over evil, am the ultimate weapon! I am he who cuts the insolent catalyst which flows out from the chaos with the sword of victory! It's only fitting that I deserve to be called the ultimate weapon! No, you are far greater than the ultimate weapon, since you wield your four dark devas of destruction. I, I see. I don't know why, but I'm not liking this. Cut the bullshit and say it clearly. What is the ultimate weapon? In order to clarify that, we first need to solve the secret of the funhouse. Huh? The secret of the funhouse? You still don't realize it? Jeez, get it together. You're supposed to be the symbols of hope, aren't you? Ah, I forgot. Except for Hajime, of course. Except for Hajime? If we make it out of this, I'll explain it to you guys. Anyway, we must first clarify the secret of the Funhouse, right? Then I think it must have something to do with the structure of the Funhouse. Strawberry House leads to Strawberry Tower, and Grape House leads to Grape Tower. But in actuality, they are both the same building, and both houses are linked to the central tower. 
It is undeniable that such a sweet building structure is the secret of the funhouse. Man, not only does that make perfect sense, but Miss Sonia's beautiful voice is just so soothing. Full show! I shall leave this matter to your discretion. In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the exact same place. So that's the secret of the Funhouse. Is that really it? It's weird to say they're both the same place. I mean, the walls are different colors. And the designs on the floor are also different. We've already settled this problem. Give it 10 years before you argue with Miss Sonia. In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the exact same place. No, that's wrong. Both of those towers, are they really the same place? Why are you asking that now? Do you harbor a grudge because my kingdom destroyed your homeland? Hajime, I won't tolerate any sort of rebellion. I mean, doesn't it seem strange? When we went to Grape Tower from Grape Hall, Nekomaro's body was in front of the door to Strawberry Hall. But when we went to Strawberry Tower from Strawberry Hall, his body was in front of the door to Grape Hall. It's probably some kind of trick, like the floor rotating 180 degrees or something. If it is, then see? That means it could have passed as the exact same place, right? If so, then what? Do you seriously think such a simple answer is the correct answer? Does that mean he's wrong? Oops, I guess I've said too much. If the floor didn't rotate, then that means we need to think about the structure of the building again. Bow down! Then how about this? Somebody moved Nekomaru's body. While we were moving from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower? But we should have all been together during that time. Even if they tried to move the body inside the tower. Then Monokuma did it. While we were moving, Monokuma quickly moved things around. But Nekomaru's body wasn't the only thing moved. Are you saying the broken pillar was moved too? If it is too heavy to carry, let them roll it. Just like if there is no bread, let them eat cake. There are many different ways. The body and the pillar could have been moved. The pillar could have been rolled. And Nekomaru could have been moved piece by piece. I decree it was Monokuma's doing. Moving the body and the pillar in such a short time. That might be hard even for Monokuma, don't you think? It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly strong, wielding the power of the futuristic Robo Bear. The pillar, the body, everything at the crime scene? He could have moved it all easy as pie! It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly strong, wielding the power of the futuristic Robo Bear. The pillar, the body, everything at the crime scene. Allow me to cut through those words! Moving the body and pillar is possible but it would have been impossible to move the oil on the floor. Huh? 
When the position of Nekomaru's body in the pillar changed, the oil surrounding his body moved too. Physically moving all of the oil like that is simply not possible, no matter how you look at it. Then it's impossible to think it was moved. I am, I am terribly sorry. I cannot believe I got so fired up. It's all right. A fired up Miss Sonia is awesome to watch. So what really happened? Does that mean the two towers aren't the same building? Hmm. We can't be certain of that either. Not when the experiment involving the handbook I left on the tower floor was a complete success. Yeah, the e-handbook was still there. That's why we thought the two towers were the same building. If they're not the same building, or two different buildings, then what are they? Hmm. Hmm. No idea, huh? Nagito, I thought it would come to this. I knew my turn was coming up. Fine, I'll tell you guys a big hint that can help you solve the secret of the funhouse. Give us the answer, not a friggin' hint! But then it wouldn't mean anything. I need you guys to do this class trial properly. It's also important for me because it will help me... determine something. But how do we know your hint is any good? It's suspicious that you're the only one who knows it. I have a good reason for that. The reason I'm the only one who knows it is because I was the only one who performed the appropriate action. I see! You're talking about the final dead room, right? You cleared the life-threatening game there and found something, didn't you? That's right. The hint is what I saw after I cleared it. In the depths of the final dead room, there was a hidden room surrounded by concrete. And there, a small conspicuous window waited, all by itself. From that window, I saw some very strange... Strange scenery. Strange scenery? Instead of explaining it, it might be faster just to show you. At an opportune time, I found a perfect camera in the final dead room. You took a picture? Yep. See? This is it. Let me explain it to you again. I took this picture on the first floor of Strawberry House, from the secret room within the final dead room. But don't you think it's weird? If the Funhouse's structure is what you guys have been thinking, then there's lots of things that don't make sense in this picture, right? Then let's begin. Shall I call it... Thinking time? Here! You said this photo was taken from the hidden room inside the final dead room, right? If that's the case, then that means it should have been taken from the first floor of Strawberry House. Yeah, it should have been. Then, 
This is definitely strange. This photo doesn't look like it was taken from the first floor. The angle suggests it was taken from higher up. I see. And is that it? The structure of the funhouse is what we thought it was. Grape house and strawberry house should link to the tower in the middle. Which means, if you're viewing the tower from strawberry house, you should see grape house behind it. But in this photo, I don't see anything behind the tower. No shadow, no shape, no grape house at all. That's right. Good call. In summary, this is the truth contained in this photo. The first floor of Strawberry House is located in a high area, and Grape House is not behind the tower. It's not? Are you saying that Grape House is merely an illusion spell cast by Monokuma's cursed eye? From this point on, do your own thinking. Now that you've finally met the same requirements as me, if you guys are truly symbols of hope, you can easily solve a simple mystery like this. It might be possible for Hajime to solve it too, even though he's just a normal high school student. Despite the fact that you don't have a real talent, you already know about the other clue. referring to when you suddenly appeared on the second floor of Grape House, right? I'm asking you just to be safe. At the time, where do you think I came from? The top floor, right? Such sharp eyes. So you realized it already. The top floor? So the third floor? But the Monokuma Archive should be the only room on the third floor of Grape House. What does it mean?
all coming together! I got it! I know the secret of the funhouse! Then let me hear it. What kind of answer will you give, I wonder? In the picture Nagito took from Strawberry House, I didn't see Grape House at all. So where did Grape House go? There was only one possibility. It was in a position where it couldn't be seen from Strawberry House. Which means Strawberry House and Grape House are in the same building, but on different floors. Same building? Different floors? Then... The two houses aren't two different three-story buildings. They're actually one six-story building? If you think about it like that, based on Nagito's picture, it's clear where Strawberry House is located. I see! On top of Grape House. That's where Strawberry House is located. Because of that, the photo taken from the first floor of Strawberry House was at a high angle. Altogether, this means the first floor of Strawberry House is also the fourth floor above Grape House. Oh snap! I never expected that the two houses were connected vertically. But what about the shape of the building? The two houses were completely different shapes. Um... Strawberry House is four-sided, and Grape House is six-sided, right? It never occurred to us that they were the same building because it was structured with two different shapes. A quadrilateral and a hexagon overlaid atop each other to misdirect how we would perceive them. And it worked, didn't it? Disregarding the tower, we fully believe the two houses were two separate, distinct buildings. In order to conceal the unique design of the fun house, Monokuma put us to sleep so we couldn't look at the outside of the building when he brought us to it. You've just been kuma <laughs> Don't you think a building full of so many surprises totally deserves to be called a fun house? Then, it's true? The building was really like that? That's right! Those two houses exist on different floors in the same building! Constructing a building like that on your own without my knowledge? H how horrible! Then what about the towers? Are they arranged vertically just like the houses? Yeah, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower should have also been different floors inside the same building. Just like Strawberry House was on top of Grape House. Strawberry Tower was also on top of Grape Tower. However, if they're different floors within the same building, why was Nekomaru's body in both places? Ah, your precious hammies don't know? But it's so simple. Alrighty then, I'll be the one who solves this mystery in a flash. Please watch me, Miss Sonia. Oh, I see. Do whatever you like. Oh, definitely make her watch me. I'm gonna stand out till she notices me. I'm gonna solve this mystery in a flash. And hurry up, dumbass. One of the bodies in one of the towers was actually a dummy! You mean a fake body? Nekomaru died with a mechanical body. It should be possible to construct a dummy from spare parts. You're a magnificent, Gundam! No fair! You totally stole my spotlight! So which one was the fake body? Shut up! Just pick one of them!
I'm gonna solve this mystery in a flash. Then hurry up, dumbass! One of the bodies in one of the towers was actually a dummy! No, that's wrong! Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy. That can be proven by Kazuichi's account. Huh? Me? Remember? When we moved from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower, we thought the body had moved. And that's when you said... Right up until that moment, you were disassembling Nekomaru's body at Grape Tower, right? The killer couldn't have known how you'd take apart his body, so they couldn't have built a dummy. Unless Kazuichi was the one who built the dummy, then it would be a different story. <laughs> Miss Sonia, that's a pretty harsh joke. You are joking, right? It's all right. Kazuichi is not the killer. If he was, he wouldn't have fixed the elevator or the button in Strawberry Hall. It'd be much more convenient for the killer if it stayed broken. I see. That is disappointing. I'm even more disappointed. However, even if Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy, it's meaningless if we don't have the important answer. The reason Nekomaru's body was in both towers, even though it was supposed to be on different floors. Maybe it was simply moved? The body moved to a different floor? You can't think of a device like that? A device that moves things to different floors in the same building? Must be talking about an elevator. What? Are you saying Nekomaru's body was transported using an elevator? Where the hell is this elevator anyway? It's the tower itself. The inside of the tower is one big elevator. Which means the tower was designed so that the whole room goes up and down like an elevator. So whether you enter from Strawberry Hall or Grape Hall, it all leads to the same room, right? So that's why we could only enter it from one side or the other. Now that you mention it, sometimes when I pressed the door button, it took a while for it to open. I see. We were basically waiting for the room to arrive just like an elevator. <laughs> Please hold on! If the inside of the whole tower ascends and descends like an elevator... Then why is there a picture of a strawberry on the far back door when you enter from Grape Tower? And a picture of a grape on the far back door when you enter from Strawberry Tower? If the room just moves up and down like an elevator, there's no reason for the doors to change. Plus, after the incident, the far back door in Grape Tower had chains wrapped around it, right? But when we entered Strawberry Tower, those chains were gone. Not just that, but if I remember correctly, 
Even the doorknob was broken off. There are too many strange things. Was that tower really an elevator? When you see people and things, make sure you focus on the good parts instead of the bad. What did you say? So, let's put aside what's changed and focus our attention on what hasn't. Why do we have to do that? It's fine. Come on. What does everything that hasn't changed have in common? I see! Is it safe to say that all the items on the floor didn't change? And? And? Why did the picture on the far back door change? If you can figure that out, you'll have the answer. The reason is because that elevator has something unique about it. I see! So that's it. The elevator was designed so only the floor moved. Only the floor moved? Which means the whole room wasn't an elevator. Only the floor was. That's why we saw different doors in each tower. Which means on the first floor of Grape Tower, the door on the far back wall had a strawberry design. And on the fourth floor, which was Strawberry Tower, a different door on the far back wall had a grape design. Then, where do the different floors lead? I want to say they lead outside, but they're probably just for show. Just for show? Why was something like that necessary? So we'd falsely believe that the doors were connected to where their picture signified. It was actually very effective. Because of that, we totally misunderstood the building's structure. I don't get it. But I guess it means whoever designed this building had a totally twisted personality. Did you hear that, Monami? Don't blame this on me! Take responsibility for yourself! Then I'll take responsibility and gently caress you! <laughs> like, there's no way that's gonna happen! Stop with the tasteless jokes! By the way, what does the chain on the far back door in Grape Tower mean? It was probably wrapped there by the killer to keep us as far from Strawberry Tower as possible. Why? Because of that chain. You guys thought you couldn't enter there, right? The killer destroyed the Strawberry Hall, but so we'd stay away from Strawberry Tower. Everything was done to tamper with the evidence so we wouldn't find out about the secret of the Funhouse. The appearance of a body in the tower would contradict what we thought we knew about the building. In that situation, if we'd gone to Strawberry Tower, we'd have seen that contradiction firsthand. 
and using that as a clue, we might have discovered the truth. The truth that the two houses and the two towers are actually one complete vertical building. The killer wanted to keep us from learning that. That's why they made us stay away from Strawberry Tower. They destroyed the button and wrapped a chain around the door just for that? Would it really have inconvenienced the killer if we learned the true structure of the building? It would have been a major inconvenience. After all, this funhouse is strongly connected to the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru. Hold on. You're progressing much too quickly. There's still a contradiction concerning the building structure. What a pain. It's fine already. Gundam, please proceed. You said earlier that Strawberry House and Grape House are connected vertically, right? If so, how does the contact elevator supposedly transport us from one house to the other? If that elevator moves vertically, then when your back is facing the elevator, both towers should be on the same side. But does this reflect reality? Inside Grape House, Grape Hall is on your right when your back is to the elevator. And inside Strawberry House, Strawberry Hall is on your left when your back is to the elevator. Which means the houses are on exact opposite sides of the tower. Answer me, fiend! What does this mean? What does this mean? The two houses are connected vertically. The elevator should move. Vertically, not horizontally. However, at both houses, if the contact elevator is behind you, the towers are in opposite directions. Which means your reasoning is clearly contradictory. What's with this iron curtain of teamwork? The two houses are connected vertically. The elevator should move. Vertically, not horizontally. No, that's wrong. The elevator wasn't just moving vertically. Isn't that right, Kazuichi? Huh? Me? Come on. You used the elevator while you were holding that compass Nagito gave you. Right? Ah, uh, that. Yeah, it was pretty strange. From start to finish, somehow the compass needle rotated 180 degrees. Rotated 180 degrees? Meaning, as the elevator moved between the two houses, it also rotated 180 degrees. was probably following the building's perimeter as it rotated to the other side. Which means the exit would be on the opposite side once you arrived at the other house, right? And thanks to that, the tower we saw on our right side when we arrived at Grape House appeared on our left side when we were at Strawberry House. An elevator that rotates while it moves 
Is that even possible? It's like something from an amusement park. Well, a fun house is an amusement park attraction, you know. And since the building doesn't really need to be structurally practical, it makes for some splendid fun. That's not splendid at all. You're inhuman. You say I'm inhuman, but I'm just a bear. So I was never human to begin with. I'm different from these lowly humans. So we're done with the secret of the fun house, right? Then let's start talking about the important stuff. What's the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru? And how'd they combine it with the pillar? Huh? You still don't know what the ultimate weapon is yet? It's what I found at the octagon, you know. What is the octagon? I haven't heard about that yet. Oh my... I can't believe I have to explain that now. As long as you know what an octagon means, you can solve this simple mystery easily. I see! If I recall, an octagon is a shape with eight sides, right? I didn't expect you to know that. For a substitute reserve course student, you're quite knowledgeable. I guess I should continue listening. Where is the place befitting of the name Octagon? Here! You're talking about the secret room surrounded by concrete in the depths of the final dead room. Why is that place the octagon? You know how the four-sided strawberry house is on top of the six-sided grape house? If you cut a four-sided shape out of a six-sided one, you get eight edges. It becomes an eight-sided shape. That's basically the gist of it. The true identity of the octagon is that secret room in the depths of the final dead room. In actuality, that place contained various weapons. Then the ultimate weapon was there too? That's a little different. I learned the true identity of the ultimate weapon at the octagon. Learned? The true identity of the ultimate weapon is the funhouse. Which means the killer used the building structure as their weapon and killed Nekomaru. Like me, the killer probably realized the secret of the funhouse from the scenery and then thought of a way to kill making use of the building structure. The funhouse itself is the weapon, so they killed using the building structure? That's why the killer tried to keep us from learning the mystery of the building. But more importantly, using the building itself as a weapon? Such a spectacular crime. <laughs> <laughs> it truly deserves to be called the ultimate weapon!
Okay, everyone, all together now. Monami is a serious stu fatly. your day as well. I'm trying to force myself to be more energetic, or else my mental state won't be able to keep up. Ugh, my heart's thumping like crazy. I might as well have a laid back so what attitude and go ahead with high energy. Yeehaw! Ah, but be careful that your batteries don't run out for various reasons. And just like I say each time, don't forget to save frequently! I... I never... expected the funhouse itself to be the ultimate weapon! Oh well, let's just press on ahead. I, is it really alright to accept a situation so easily? I mean, that's not what's important. The thing that's really important is... The killer who used the building structure. Like who's Mekumaru's murderer? But is it really okay to believe the building is the weapon? Nagito said it, you know. There's no way I'd lie at such an important moment. I don't want to die either. What happened to the bastard who kept saying how much they didn't mind dying? He's right. There was a time when I thought I could become a stepping stone for your hopes, but... I will sincerely retract that remark. Retract? I'm disappointed too, you know. If this was a murder for the sake of hope, I'd happily sacrifice myself. <laughs> you say such falsehoods, per usual. There is no such thing as murder for the sake of hope. Murder is simply murder. Forcibly sacrificing others for one's own desires. Even one as diabolical as I would avoid such actions. I see. It's fine. Let's just leave him alone and find out who killed Coach Nekomaru as fast as we can. Just so you know, it's not like I'm getting hungry or anything, you know. Uh, Akane! You are drooling waterfalls? Anyway, if the killer used the building's structure, why don't we think about how they used it? How they killed Nekomaru. It might be better if we clarify the cause of death first, don't you think? He might have died from falling. Died from falling? If the fun house's secret is that it's a structure where both towers and houses are vertically connected, then the killer made use of its height and caused Nekomaru to die from falling. Are you saying they pushed him off? Where'd they push him off from? That, I don't know yet. <laughs> Don't just make things up when you don't know the method. Where in that building would you even be able to push someone off in the first place? It might be possible in the tower. You could push him off the fourth floor when the elevator is on the first floor. Did you forget how the elevator functions? When it's on the first floor, the door on the fourth floor won't open. <laughs> Saying he died from falling is truly incorrect. You should burn in the flames of hell. Hmm. But my gut is going crazy right now.
When the elevator is on the first floor, you can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Hmm. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from up there. Then, how about this? After locking Mekamaru inside the elevator, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor and made use of the drop. Hold on! Did you forget the elevator has a sensor? As long as there's a moving object inside, the other door won't open. Which means the elevator wouldn't have moved either. That must be the threshold of that elevator. When the elevator is on the first floor, you can't go through the door on the floor. It'd be impossible to shut then. How about after locking the lock? They move the elevator and make use of the drop. Hold on. Did you forget? As long as there's a moving object in. No, that's wrong. That sensor should only work if something is moving. If Nekomaru wasn't moving inside, the elevator sensor wouldn't have detected anything. Could it be his sleep mode? When Nekomaru's goodnight button is pressed, all of his functions shut down and he enters sleep mode. If he's in sleep mode, the elevator sensor wouldn't have noticed him, right? If I see. So that's how... However, even if they moved the elevator in that manner, Nekomaru would have just moved along with it. There would have been no drop for him to fall and die from, yes? That's what I was about to explain before Kazuichi interrupted me. Silence, pest! Now you're calling me a pest?! If you arrange it a certain way, you can cause the drop within the elevator. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is suspicious. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? What about the oil on the floor? The doorknob on the floor it seems suspicious. How about we all shut up and listen to what Chiaki has to say? Silence, pest! Don't be so cold. What if I start to enjoy it? If you arrange it a certain way, you can cause the drop. So you're telling us to think about the arrangement. That arrangement, the hammer is suspicious. Isn't it about time we went up? What about the oil on the floor? The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. I agree with that. Didn't the doorknob have scrape marks on it? That might have been where it got scraped by the wire. Is that the same wire that was tied around Nekomaru? The tip of that wire was tied into a loop. If the elevator moved while that loop part hung from the doorknob... If, if they did something like that, he would have been suspended in mid-air! That's right. He was suspended in mid-air. Huh? The killer tied up Nekomaru with the wire while he was in sleep mode. Tied the tip of the wire into a knot and hung it on the doorknob to the fourth floor. With that, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor of Grape Tower. And suspended Mekamaru in midair. That's right! He was so well hung! <laughs> Kinda like. You better not finish that sentence! The killer took advantage of the elevator's unique feature. Only the floor moves. 
By doing that, they created a drop so Nekomaru could fall to his death. Too easy! So what if they created a drop? There's no way you can make him fall and die with just that! Why? If Nekomaru is suspended in mid-air like that, then how do you get him to fall? Because if he's suspended in mid-air, he won't die if he doesn't actually fall. Even if they suspended Nekomaru from a wire, how would they make him fall? There's no one in the tower to push him off. There's no way they could do that. It doesn't mean someone had to push him off. It's possible that he fell on his own. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode, right? If he was sleeping, there's no way he could do that to himself. <laughs> Now's the time if you want to take back that sleep. But in that case, you still won't be able to explain the drop. Moving the elevator with Nekomaru inside is just impossible. End of story. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode, right? Allow me to cut through those words! What do you think would happen if Nekomaru woke up while he was suspended upside down in midair? What are you saying? Like, how would he even wake up? He has an alarm inside his body. As long as it was armed, it would have deactivated his sleep mode. Which means the killer set the alarm before they suspended Nekomaru. If you woke up from an alarm, and realized you were hanging upside down and had no clue why... If something like that happened to you, you would start panicking a lot, right? Instinctively, your body would start moving. Nekomaru probably did exactly that. And then, in order to make him fall from the force he was generating, the wire was hung on the tip of the doorknob so it would easily slip off. In actuality, the scrape marks caused by the wire were near the tip of the doorknob, right? But Nekomaru didn't fall because the wire came off, right? He fell because the entire doorknob came off. When Nekomaru awoke, he must have struggled much more than expected, which caused the doorknob to break off. Was that... Unexpected for the killer, too? Well, that's probably it. If they knew it'd leave behind evidence like that, they would have at least tried to do something to cover it up. I see. So that's how Nekomaru fell to his death. Do you finally understand now? Yeah. It appears it's just as Miss Sonia said. I'm just a pest. No, I'm not just a pest. I'm a total fucking pig. Isn't that right, Miss Sonia? If I'm a fucking pig, you can say so! No, I believe you gave your all. Hey! Why aren't you teasing me anymore? This guy, he gets off on this. So thanks to that alarm, Nekomaru ended up falling while he was still hanging upside down. That doesn't mean he just crashed straight into the floor. Of course, you know that too, right? I see.
see. When Nekomaru fell to the floor, he ended up colliding with the pillar. Isn't that it? Finally, the pillar! So that's how the pillar shattered, and why oil was spilled all over the place. See, I told you the pillar was the weapon. My gut was totally right. Well, the pillar was a bonus. It's not even clear if the killer intended that, or if it was just a coincidence. At this point, it is quite difficult to find a clue that will lead to the killer. Then what about the alarm? I'm positive the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m., and if we map it out from there... Hold on, baby gangsta! S stop calling me baby gangsta! What'd you just say? Did you say the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m.? <laughs> you didn't check it yourself? Nekomaru's alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. Nah, that's impossible. Because even though I slept in a little, I still got to the tower at 7 in the morning. N now that you mention it, so did I. There was no way I could be late for Monokuma Tai Chi, so I looked for Grape Tower before 7 a.m. And if we found Nekomaru's body there, it would have been before the 7.30 a.m. alarm went off. It appears yet another contradiction has been birthed. How were you able to discover Nekomaru died at 7.30 a.m. when you went to the tower at 7? Th that's what I want to know! We headed for Grape Tower. Before 7 a.m., I am certain. But the alarm inside Nekomaru's chest was set for 7.30 a.m. Nekomaru died because of that alarm, right? This time of death and the time the body was discovered. One of those must be an illusion. The killer probably did some tampering. They probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. That's gotta be it! We headed for Grape Tower. Before 7 a.m. But the alarm inside Neko was set for 7.30. Nekomaru died because of this time of death and the time one of those must be an open killer probably did something. Probably messed with the clock inside Neko. No, that's wrong. No, the clock inside his chest was a radio clock, so it would have been impossible to mess with. So you're saying there's no way the killer could have tampered with the clock? Maybe the clock Miss Sonia saw was the one that got tampered with. The clock inside Grape House? No, I checked all the clocks inside the Fun House. Oh, that's what I asked you to do. So you really listened to me and checked all the clocks. And because of that, I can confidently declare that all the clocks had the same time displayed. If there's no possibility that the time was tampered with, then we must doubt that human's testimony. Please believe me, we are not lying! Then, maybe it's a misunderstanding? I never misunderstand! I'll crush you into dog food!
It's all coming together! You said you checked all the clocks inside the building. Isn't that right, Fuyuhiko? Yeah, none of the clocks had the wrong time. But what if all those clocks have been messed with? What? All the clocks? So even if you checked all the clocks inside the building, there's no way you'd have noticed it. I see. So the killer messed with the time inside the whole building by changing all the clocks. <sighs> so that's what it was. There's no way I would have noticed that. This is truly fantastic! Now's not the time to be pleased. More importantly, how much was the time off? If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on Nekomaru's radio clock. The time of death was clearly 7.30 a.m. The problem is, what time would 7.30 be? In our time. Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? If only I heard the sound when he fell. It would have been a great clue. Or his scream. He's not the type to let out a scream! If only Nekomaru's alarm was loud enough, we would have heard it too. There's no point in saying that. If does not exist in this world! If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on the, the time of death. It's clearly 7.30. The problem is, what's in our time? Are there any clues that can be... If only I heard the sound when you... I agree with that. That's right. We should have heard the sound he made when he fell. Wasn't it that rumbling noise? Rumbling? I thought it was just an earthquake, so I went back to sleep. Was that the sound from when Nekomaru fell? Well, a huge body fell from the fourth floor to the first, and the pillar fell with it. It's obvious we'd hear the impact sound. We heard that noise too! It was when we were gathered at the Strawberry House Lounge. What is it, Sonia? Oh, well, that sound everyone heard? I did not hear it at all. Huh? You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping. I could not sleep at all. I was awake the whole night with hunger pings. There's nothing to worry about. What's important is that rumbling noise anyway. If we use that rumbling sound as a reference, we might be able to figure out how much our time was off. I heard that sound probably around 5.30 in the morning. Huh? You can tell? I instantly woke up and left my room. And that's when I saw the clock in the lounge. Excellent work, Akane! I see! Nekomaru's alarm went off at 7.30. And if we heard the sound of his impact at 5.30, that means our time was off by two hours. Two hours? That much? We were starving pretty badly. There's no way we would have noticed. Plus, the funhouse has no windows. And there weren't any Monokuma announcements either. However, for what reason did the killer alter our perception of time? The reason is obvious so they can lure out just Nekomaru. If you messed with the clocks and used a specific thing, you'd definitely get Nekomaru to the tower alone, right? 
From there, the killer's plan was a splendid success. That's all it means. I see! That's it. The killer made use of the Monokuma Tai Chi activity in the morning. How did they use it? We were required to go to Grape Tower every morning at 7 a.m. for that activity, right? But if they mess with all the clocks inside the building, what would that do to us? We wouldn't be able to attend on time, but that wouldn't affect Nekomaru. His radio clock had the exact time. That's right. In doing so, the killer was able to lure him to the tower by himself at the precise time. Then, when I witnessed Nekomaru early in the morning... If I recall, you witnessed Nekomaru around 5 a.m. And if that time was also two hours off, it should have been 7 a.m. Yeah. That's pretty much it. At that time, he was heading over to Monokuma Tai Chi, right on schedule. I see. Now that I think about it, I realize what Monokuma meant when he said those words. Ah! Too early! He didn't even ask you yet! When you said everyone, you were including us, right? We thought we came to the tower on time, but in truth, it was way past the meeting time. Ah, jeez! That's, well, how should I put it? Um, what was it? You know, tripping over a foot, or something like that. Are you talking about tripping over someone else's fault? Wrong! Too bad! Liar! I'm right! That's not it! It's incorrect! Th that's definitely the correct answer. You always get so stubborn like this. Let's just ignore the peanut gallery. Now that we've found out how the killer lured Nekomaru, the number of suspects has drastically decreased. Hey, why would that decrease the number of suspects? Don't be a friggin' liar! You'll know I'm not lying when you listen to what Fuyuhiko's going to say next. Huh? What the hell do you mean? You witnessed Nekomaru going toward the tower. Did something else happen after that? Are you talking about that alarm? Hmm. Alarm? A little while after I witnessed Nekomaru. The clock in the Strawberry House Lounge started going off. Plus, it was just before that rumbling sound occurred. That's it. So that's what it is. If Nekomaru died when the rumble happened, then whoever doesn't have an alibi at the time is the prime suspect. Really? Was there anyone who didn't have an alibi at that time? I remember now. The sound was so loud I couldn't help bolting from my room. But there was one guy who never left the lounge. We were both on the same floor. It's pretty weird that Bastard never came out of his guest room. Which means that person does not have an alibi for when Nekomaru fell? Who is it? Who's the Bastard? You're the only one! The one who wasn't there. It's you. Right, Nagito? That's right! Nagito wasn't there! It was just me, Gundam, and Fuyuhiko. You didn't come out, even though the alarm was going off like crazy. You weren't in your room, were you? If that's the case, where were you? Who 
please, say something! If you don't hurry up and answer, I'm gonna suicide dive you! If I may be frank, even if I wanted to go to the lounge, I couldn't. You couldn't? What do you mean? <laughs> it's merely the foolish talk of the week. Not only did I not hear the alarm, I never even heard that rumbling sound. You, you're definitely fucking lying. Uh, however, that is also true for me. It is obvious that I did not hear the alarm in Strawberry House. But I did not hear the rumbling sound either. Is that not strange? I mean, everyone else heard it. To be honest, it's not just them. The same goes for me too. I was in a pretty deep sleep, so I thought that's why I couldn't hear it, but... It wasn't that. I probably couldn't hear it at all. Couldn't hear it? What does that mean? You still don't know. Think about what the three of us who didn't hear a sound have in common, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. Nagito, Sonya, and Chiaki, the three of you were staying in deluxe rooms, right? If I recall, the deluxe rooms are... could not hear the rumbling noise. That's right. It was because the deluxe rooms have superior sound insulation. You actually noticed that. Nice catch, Hajime. Are you using your ultimate reserve course student talent? Now then, you guys must understand by now, right? The true identity of Nekomaru's killer. H hold on a sec. Why does that lead to who the killer is? <laughs> Why? Well, that fact just now is a very important clue, and a decisive factor in identifying the killer. Decisive factor? Gundam, there's something I want to ask you. When the alarm rang at the Strawberry House Lounge, you rushed over there too, right? What's wrong with that? If the bell of catastrophe rings throughout the night, it is the universe's providence to stop it. Why were you able to hear it? Hear what? I mean, you were also staying in a deluxe room, right? 
Nagito was staying in a deluxe room in the same house on the same floor, and he couldn't even hear it. So why were you able to hear that alarm? Uh, now that you mention it... G Gundam? There is only one possibility. You weren't in your room at the time. That's why, even though you were staying in a deluxe room, you still went to the lounge. Am I right? Gundam... Um... You have some sort of explanation, right? Gundam probably couldn't return to his room because of Fuyuhiko. Me? After you saw Nekomaru heading to the tower, you stayed at the lounge for a while. Am I correct? Until the moment that alarm started ringing, right? If you were in the lounge for that long, the killer who had left earlier obviously wouldn't be able to go back. Even though Mekamaru's murder was a death trap that utilized the alarm in his chest, the killer still needed to prepare the murder in advance. Like putting Nekomaru in sleep mode and tying him up with the wire. In order to do that, the killer needed to be waiting for Nekomaru at the tower. Which means when Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru, the killer was already at the tower. And once they tried to go back, they couldn't because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. In their original plan, the killer should have returned to their room before the alarm in the lounge went off. And they were supposed to stay in their room. They weren't planning to come out and go to the lounge. Which means they wouldn't have heard the alarm or the rumbling sound, thus proving they were in the room. Just like us. The best case scenario would have been if those two in the lounge had gone to check the deluxe rooms. After all, if they personally saw the killer sleeping in their room, it gives the killer a stronger alibi. Unfortunately, they failed to secure that alibi. Because... I was in the lounge. So the killer couldn't go back to their room and ended up hearing the lounge's alarm. But why'd you come out? You should have hid till the excitement died down. If Gundam tried to hide, and if those two went to his room to check on him, he would have been found out. That would have been the worst possible outcome. That's why he couldn't just stay hidden. If those two had just checked the deluxe rooms as planned, that would have been ideal, but... How ironic. The moment Fuyuhiko set foot in the lounge, your plan was doomed. G Gundam? Please. Can you at least say something? Answer me this. Including myself and my four dark devas of destruction, how many ears do we possess? Huh? The answer is ten. That's right, I possess ten ears. That means I have five times the hearing of a normal human. The soundproof system here may as well not exist. Is that your argument? You bastard! Do you understand the situation you're in right now? D do not panic! The truth shall now commence! At the time, I left my room to go to the bathroom. By coincidence, I heard the alarm. That's right. That's all it was. The world is always so simple. Are you saying it was just a coincidence? Isn't that timing a little too perfect? And yet, I'm being suspected by all of you. It seems it was actually horrible timing on my part. I see. You're still holding out. Well, you don't have to admit it. We're going to decide who the killer is with the majority vote anyway. So, 
why don't we just go ahead and start voting? It's obvious that Gundam is the killer. Uh, hold on a sec. You know, Hajime, this class trial, this killing, it's merely the opening act, you know. Hey! What do you mean the class trial is just the opening act? Perhaps I should say it's just a farce. Just a boring farce. So boring, so stressful. I'm so painfully bored that I might develop stomach ulcers. Seriously. Let's just hurry up and finish this before I collapse from poor health. Nagito, something definitely happened to you, didn't it? Mm -hmm. At some point during the investigation, your behavior became even weirder. What? What actually happened? Did you discover something? Well, let's just leave that fun for later. And finish this opening act already. Ah, you said opening act again! P please hold on! We have yet to hear Gundam's rebuttal! But he's completely shut up. Perhaps he can't argue anymore. Gundam! <laughs> I was simply at a loss for words after being dumbfounded by your pathetic assumption. In fact, I shall deny the very basis. Your assumption has been wrong since the beginning. Since the beginning? Based on your assumption, I hung Nekomaru from the fourth floor of the tower and made the floor descend to the first floor. From there, after returning to Strawberry House, I was present when the alarm at the lounge went off, correct? Although going to and fro is busy enough as it is, how would I be able to travel between both houses anyway? I see. The contact elevator was broken. As I recall, the killer tampered with the Grape House control panel, which shut down the elevator. Plus, the stopped elevator should have been facing the Grape House side. If so, the human who used the elevator would have left it at Grape House. For these reasons, it's an indisputable fact that the killer destroyed the elevator at Grape House. And what's wrong with that? If the elevator was broken at Grape House, he wouldn't be able to return to Strawberry House. However, I was already at Strawberry House. I was present when the alarm in the lounge started ringing. Which means your assumption is clearly wrong. Are you serious? And here I thought it's already been decided. <laughs> Have you learned your lesson, pitiful humans? You cannot overcome this contradiction. that elevator was the only means of travel between the two houses. As long as that elevator was broken, your assumption collapses. Plus, the elevator was broken at Grape House. If the killer cannot return to Strawberry House... Since I was at Strawberry House at that time, there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we stop this already? That elevator was the only means of travel between the two. No, that's wrong! No, there should have been another way to move between the two houses without the elevator. Such a method does not exist! Then why don't we ask the person who actually used that method? Your 
the only one! Nagito, you should know. Huh? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. You appeared so suddenly that one time because you used that method, right? There's a secret passage connecting the first floor of Strawberry House to the third floor of Grape House. Isn't that right? Jeez. Once again, I let the reserve course show off. But you're right. There's a door on the floor of the Octagon, which is on the first floor of Strawberry House. After I opened the door and went down, Surprise, surprise! I ended up in the Monokuma Archive, which is on the third floor of Grape House. Meaning, the third floor and the fourth floor are actually connected. Plus, once you've cleared the final dead room once, you can pass through it as many times as you want. If they used that secret passage, they could have gone between the two houses as much as they want. Infinity Unlimited Flame! However, what if the killer was unaware of the existence of the final dead room? There's no way they didn't know. That is merely an illusion you have fabricated from your own suspicion. <laughs> if you value your life, you should stop with your scrutiny. There's no way I can stop. Did you say? Don't make me angry! You wouldn't like me when I'm angry! Even if the Turbid Box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes, provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! I already proved the secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the Octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blind confusion, at least pray to the key which dwells in the light! Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blood... Allow me to cut through those words! The wire used to string up Nekomaru's body. The hammer that looked like the weapon, and the chain on the door in the tower. Those are all the items that weren't in Funhouse. Where did the killer obtain them? The only place I can think of is the Octagon. There were various weapons and tools there. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff like wires, hammers, and chains too. Since those items were used in the crime, there's no doubt that the killer went to the Octagon. If that's the case, they obviously know about the secret passage too, right? It seems this is the end. Normally we'd end up listening to Hajime lecture us with a very long summary of the case. But there's no reason to waste any more time on this opening act. So I'm going to end this right now. Hey, what are you... First of all, by messing with all the clocks in the building, Gundam tried to lure only Nekomaru. The elevator was probably broken by that point. Thanks to that, Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower, which was supposed to be the meetup point. 
so he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, just like we did when we found out the elevator was broken. Well, it's obvious he'd attempt that. At that time, we didn't know the two towers were the exact same place. Also, the button in Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, so he was easily able to enter Strawberry Tower. But surprise! Gundam was waiting for Nekomaru's arrival! Hold on. If Nekomaru didn't go to Strawberry Tower, what would the killer have done then? Their plan was a balancing act of uncertainties. But even if they failed, they probably wouldn't have minded. They can just greet everyone the next morning as if nothing happened, and come up with a different plan. And, without such a risky plan, they wouldn't have been able to lure him at all. I'm going to continue summarizing the case, okay? Through this, Gundam successfully lured Nekomaru to Strawberry Tower. There's no way he could fight head-on with the robotic Nekomaru. So by pressing the Good Night button, he rendered Nekomaru powerless without fighting it. Hold on! You... what did you just say? That... I didn't battle? Hmm? What's wrong with that? Don't... mess with me! Don't mess with me! I cannot ignore those words! Why are you angry all of a sudden? You fools! Do not understand! You don't understand at all! Ha! You make me laugh! After all this time, you still don't understand anything at all! I don't understand anything. What does that mean? It appears... I cannot finish just yet. Maybe I'm just a human destined for hell. However, I cannot finish just yet. I cannot finish! What do you intend to do? It's obvious I'm going to destroy your illusory assumptions. Are you saying you still have more? You still have room to argue? Your words. You said I pressed Nekomaru's goodnight button. However, that button was on the back of Nekomaru's neck. To press it, I'd have to get behind him. It's not easy to get the drop on Coach Nekomaru. It's even more difficult if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just as I thought, truly frail. Succumbing so easily to this simple argument, it was just a mere illusion. <laughs> if you want to set me up as the killer, at least surpass your own human limitations. That's wrong, Gundam. You're the one who's wrong. <laughs> Such a wonderful line. However, I cannot say that I'm satisfied. Listen well, I shall teach you two tips for making someone admit their defeat. First, you must crush them with your own overwhelming power. And as for the other, you must provide a reason that will persuade that human. You have not fulfilled either of those yet. I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! Show me the cadaver! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! For the Tanaka Empire! It's Nekobaru's back! Do you really think I can get behind him so easily? This is the end! Even if you didn't get behind Nekomaru, you should have been able to press the button on the back of his neck. As 
long as you have the power of the hamsters you keep with you. Oh? Are you seriously saying he used his hamsters to press the button on the back of Nekomaru's neck? Of course that'd be impossible for a normal hamster, but it would have been possible for Gundams. In fact, we saw that with our very own eyes, right? Now that you mention it, after Ibuki was killed in the music venue, one of Gundam's hamsters retrieved the piece of wallpaper from the baton lighting, right? Hey, with your friends and their exceptionally smart brains, it must have been possible to secretly get one of them behind Mekamaru and press the button on the back of his neck. How about it, Gundam? <laughs> Not just myself, but you actually brought up how splendid my subordinates are. <sighs> I have no recourse but to admit it. Admit it? Did you say you admit it? It appears I've obtained a one-way ticket to hell. Fine! Then you must trample me underfoot and advance. Victory can only be built upon a foundation of corpses. You cannot find peace without sacrifice anywhere. Now, trample this life. Trample it as though it were mere trash on the side of the road. Pull the curtain strings of this worthless performance with your own two hands. everything that happened in this case. Let's first go over the many tricks the killer prepared before they committed the crime. First, they destroyed the contact elevator. This separated Nagito and the others in Strawberry House from our group in Grape House. Next, they lured Nekomaru out by himself by turning back all the clocks in the funhouse by two hours. Additionally, in order to secure an alibi, the killer went to the Strawberry House Lounge. 
and set the wall clock's alarm to 5.30 a.m. After finishing their preparations, the killer went to Strawberry Tower with the necessary tools in hand. They obtained these tools from the Octagon, which you can enter once you clear the final dead room. This means the killer discovered the secret of the Funhouse faster than anybody else. That secret being, Strawberry House and Grape House are actually the same building. On the morning of the incident, Nekomaru woke up and headed over to Grape Tower for a specific reason. There, Fuyuhiko, who was at the lounge by coincidence, witnessed Nekomaru. According to Fuyuhiko's testimony, that was around 5 a.m., but by that point, the killer had already messed with our perception of time. In actuality, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 7 a.m. That's also the same time Monokuma Tai Chi begins. Nekomaru went to Grape Tower to participate in that. However, because the contact elevator was broken, Nekomaru was unable to go to Great Tower. So he decided to try going to Strawberry Tower. But the killer was waiting for him there. With the power of hamsters, they were able to press the good night button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. This forced him to enter sleep mode, rendering him immobile. From there, the killer began preparing to use the ultimate weapon. First, they set the alarm in Nekomaru's chest to 7.30 a.m. so he'd wake up. Then they tied him up with a metal wire tied the tip of the wire into a loop and hung it on the doorknob. After leaving Strawberry Tower, the killer then destroyed the door button to Strawberry Hall. They did this to keep us from entering Strawberry Tower and to keep us from discovering the secret of the building structure that they used to kill Nekomaru. Then, they used the secret octagon passageway to travel to Grape House. After arriving at Grape Hall, they pressed the button to open the door to the tower. When that happened, the elevator-like floor of the tower began descending. And Nekomaru's body was still inside, dangling upside down in mid-air from the wire. The killer entered Grape Tower to see if their setup was successful. And placed a hammer on the floor to look like the weapon, then wrapped a chain around the back door. This was done to make us falsely believe we couldn't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. With this, the killer finished their setup and tried to go back to their room using the secret passage. So they could craft their alibi when Nekomaru died from the fall. But something unexpected happened. Fuyuhiko, who saw Nekomaru earlier, was still at the lounge. As a result, the killer couldn't return to their room, and with no options available, time ran out. The lounge's wall clock alarm started ringing at 5.30, well, actually 7.30. To avoid a worst case scenario, the killer was forced to appear in front of Fuyuhiko with the others. When the wall clock's alarm rang, that was also the same time Nekomaru was waking up.
He woke up while he was still hanging upside down, so he couldn't help but sway his body powerfully. Originally, the loop of wire was only supposed to slip off the doorknob. But because there was a heavier load than expected, the doorknob ended up breaking. Nekomaru fell from the fourth floor all the way to the first floor. He crashed into the pillar, which decapitated him on impact, and died. The sound of Nekomaru's impact echoed throughout the funhouse. However, by this point, the killer's plan was about to fail, thanks to the broken doorknob and for Yuhiko. Meaning, the killer is someone who wouldn't have heard the alarm if they were in the deluxe room. They also wouldn't have been able to return to their guest room because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. That someone is Gundam Tanaka. I can't think of anyone else but you. <laughs> splendid. <laughs> that was splendid. For a mere human, you did quite well. Stop. Stop it already. Stop using weird words to avoid the truth. Oh. I'll friggin' kill you myself! I cannot believe it. I just cannot believe. You. you killed. Nekomaru? I cannot believe something like that! You don't wish to forgive me. Do you feel regret? Then finish it! Cast your impure votes for Gundam Tanaka! My beloved, deadly foes, let the voting time begin! result isn't all that exciting. Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Please pull the lever! Crap! I bit my tongue at the most important part! Listen well! How pitiful.
fine. D damn it! This, too, must be the will of causality. You. <laughs> Let's make history. That is... Let me tell you this. Huh? <laughs> Sensing even my subtle killing intent, as expected of you, Nekomaru. This scorching, stinging, tense atmosphere! I've been a team manager for so long, I'd nearly forgotten this! This is great! What a comforting atmosphere! Hmm, that's a great line. And what is your reason? Do you intend to resolve this situation by killing me? <laughs> I am the Warlock, Gundam Tanaka! Heroes, Lords of Darkness, and even the gods themselves flee from me! I need not cling to any trivial reason. I'm simply going to kill you because your very existence is an annoyance! <laughs> You'll drench your soul with evil until the bitter end, huh? Splendid! In response to your spirit, I shall kill you with all of my might! I won't go easy on you! Don't even think about holding back! Don't waste your breath on cowardly tactics! Give me everything you got! Nekomoro Nidai! Your blood will drench the foundation of my empire! That is... <laughs> Let me tell you this. You weakling! Tears. If you flinch, you will die. Let me ask. Um. Fine.
Listen well. I shall engulf this world. I renounce you! You. But... Fine. <laughs> Fall, my tears. Let's make history. <laughs> well, <laughs> My name is Gundam Tanaka! Fade like dust in the wind! <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Please wait. I beg of you. Huh? I beg of you. How pitiful. Uh. Hmm. Fine. What is it, my four dark devas of destruction? Are you worried about me? Oh, my feared four dark devas of destruction, that is not like you at all. However, there is no need to fear. In this world, I am only a temporary visitor. I was simply visiting for a moment, and now that my duty is complete, I must return to the darkness. That is why, until the very end, Pride, conceit, courage, insolence, fearful of nothing, daunted by nothing. Let us laugh uproariously! <laughs> that is Gundam Tanaka! I shall stick with my evil until the very end! Open Sesame Pandemonium! I shall fill hell with true hell! <laughs> Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time!
Damn it. D damn it! Right. You are right. Now then. <laughs> Like that. Damn it. It's obvious. Monokuma appears! Now then. 
What's this? What's the matter? What? You don't even know? Isn't that right? Of course! But... Knows. Hey. <laughs> hmm. Well. Right? Hmm? You're getting all riled up!
Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> 